We're talking to Katherine Jacobson Raymond. Katherine, you named your talk here, It's All in the Brain, and but not a show, surprise to uh, you know, Moshe in 1940. So what, what is it that you found in your research that allowed you to come up with that title? Well, this has been something that's evolved even after the book was published. And I will be publishing a story in Discover Magazine sometime this fall on this topic. But in the book, I have a chapter called Head Case. And that chapter deals not with crazy people, but that the fact that chronic pain no longer exists uh, in the site of the lesion. It's no longer what would be called nociceptive pain. It has moved and it has moved to the brain. And in the book, I talk about central sensitization as a very important phenomenon. And this is the notion that the brain has become sensitized to the point where it is itself generating pain. And I, I thought that it was very important and the research around it is, is fascinating, but very, very difficult to bring to, into the public eye because you, know, you need to basically uh, understand cognitive neuroscience pretty well in order to understand it. I fortunately had written another book about cognitive neuroscience, my first book, so it wasn't completely obscure to me. But to say to someone, hey, you know what, that pain in your back, it's not in your back, it's in your brain and your brain's making that pain. It's like, yeah, and then what? Now what? You know, what am I supposed to do about that? That's, that's a great to know my brain is making the pain, but how am I supposed to address it? And the next thing I did really was look at how, how can you address that? Now, initially, um, I was looking at exercise as a way to deal with guarding and fear avoidant behavior. And, um, and exercise is very effective, um, especially uh, graded, non, you know, graded, graded quantitative exercise. So, you know, one day you're going to do two of these and the next day you're going to do three of them and the next day you're going to do four of them. And eventually you're going to talk your brain out of thinking you are in serious trouble. Your brain has decided for reasons that, you know, are often very obscure that when you picked up that newspaper for the, you know, 10,000th time in your life, that this was very, very dangerous to you. So it should call for back spasms that would lock up the whole area because, you know, your spine is in jeopardy as far as your brain is concerned and your brain's job is to preserve your life. So you are now locked up because you picked up a piece of, because you picked up the newspaper. Of you're not locked up because you picked up the newspaper. You're locked up because you have been, um, you know, physically inactive for a period of time, or um, you have failed to develop um, enough balance and stability. There are a million reasons you're locked up, but it's not because you are, there's a death threat from you picking up the newspaper. So we had this you know, I sort of had this understanding that exercise could convince your brain otherwise. Yeah. Yes, it works. It definitely works. And Feldenkrais can convince your brain otherwise because sure, we've, very all, we've all been in classes where, you know, there are, especially in New York at the Institute where it's the world's largest room and there are maybe, you know, 40, 50, 60 people lying on the floor on their, on their mats. And some of those people um, can't tie their shoes and others of those people don't walk well. And, uh, you know, and others have, uh, you know, they don't know that they'll be able to get off the floor once they're down there. Um, but slowly they're all moving. They're all moving and they're all finding new capacities within themselves because Basically, yes, the physical activity is taking place, but the brain is being reprogrammed. And mm -hmm. that's what, to me, Feldenkrais especially is all about. It is reprogramming the brain without the client, patient, participant having any idea that that's happening. 